Welcome to another circuit assembly tutorial. In this video, we'll be building this circuit, which is just an OR gate based upon the functionality of two diodes. In order to prove to ourselves, yes, this is an OR gate, we can do a quick run through of the input output or truth table associated with an OR gate. Starting with the first line reading from left to right, whenever both inputs are low, input one, input two is low, we should expect the output to be low, which it is. Our output LED is off, our two input LEDs are off, so that matches the first row in the true table. The next row in the true table is whenever input one is high and input two is low, then the output should be high. And in fact, that's what we get. Input one is high, input two is low, the output LED is on in a high state. The third row is that whenever input 1 is low but input 2 is high then the output LED should be high and in fact it is. Going to the final state whenever both inputs 1 and 2 are high the output LED should be high and it is. This tells us that this circuit does in fact mirror the behavior in the digital input output or truth table associated with an OR gate. Let's look at the schematic and build the circuit. This is the schematic we'll be using to build the circuit. Notice that it just mirrors the circuit we just saw on the breadboard. We'll have two normally open momentary buttons connected to those coming off one leg of them. We'll have indicator LEDs to tell us if one input or the other or both is in a high state or a low state then we'll have two diodes and an output LED. Before building a circuit it's really easy to understand how it works which is kinda nice that when we push the momentary button what happens? Well voltage travels across the contacts there'll be continuity here diverts across the 1K to light up the LED. Say we just push this upper momentary button. Then travels down this orange wire through the diode given that we'll have I'm going to be using a 9 volt to 5 volt converter but you could just as well use 6 volts, 9 volt battery, etc. to run the same circuit. It would work. But the voltage travels down the orange wire and 5 volts is more than enough to overcome the diode drop, the amount of voltage that's needed to turn on this diode and make it conduct. Now I'll be using a 1N5819, a Schottky style, two Schottky style diodes, but you could just as well use a 1N4001 or a, that'd be a normal rectifier diode, or you could use a 1N4148 small signal diode, any diode of those sorts, signal, rectifier, or shock key will work no problem but we'll have the voltage more than enough to overcome the diode to get it to turn on the shock key diodes take 0.3 around that volts to start conducting that'll send current through the 1k down to turn on our output LED that happens if we push this button and leave this one open or if we happen to push this button and leave the other one open the same story is going to play out. You push this button creates a path, continuous path from VCC on through some diverts enough to turn on our indicator LED the rest travels down overcomes the diode and turns it on and through the 1K to light our output LED. No problem. Some might wonder what's the purpose of this 10K. It's in all honesty not necessary to just get the OR behavior with these two diodes, but if you were going to connect something besides an LED here, this would give you a 10K pull down resistor so you'd know whatever circuitry is connected to in place of this LED and 1K resistor would at least have a constant state and it wouldn't be left floating. That's why the 10K is here, in case you wanted to expand outwards later. And just a final thing to note about this is that OR gates made with diodes 
you're going to lose whatever the voltage drop is of these diodes. So you're not going to get, if you put a 5 volt signal in here, by the time it comes out the other side of the diode, if you're using a Schottky style diode, you're going to have around 4.6, 4.7 volts at this stage afterwards. Or if you're using a normal rectifier or signal diode, you're going to lose 0 0.6 to 0.7 volts. So you might get 4.2 to 4.3 out of the other side or 4.3 to 4.4 volts out of the other side of this this is one of the downsides to using this particular or using diodes to make an OR gate that's one of the downsides is the voltage drops that you'll lose but you can as with most things compensate for it if you put a NOT gate through a transistor on the end of this to make a NOR gate then that will enable you to pick the voltage back up through the transistor. It's just something to think about. But before we go down that road, we just need to build the circuit so you have at least an OR gate with diodes on hand in case you want to use one in the future. The first part of the circuit we'll put together are our two input buttons. We'll connect VCC to the upper right hand corner of our first momentary button then coming off of the lower left hand corner of our momentary button we'll connect a 1k through an LED whose cathode is pointing to ground and we'll repeat this same procedure VCC to the top right hand corner of our second momentary button and then coming off the bottom left leg of our momentary button we'll connect a 1k and an LED. To get started I've just connected both of the side power rails together with these jumper wires as well as the breadboard I'm using the upper rails are separate from the lower rails so I've just added in jumper wires to make a continuous power rails down both sides and I've added in two normally open momentary buttons the first thing we need to do is connect the top right hand corners of both momentary buttons to VCC that'll take care of VCC going to the of both of our momentary buttons. Then we can take our 1K resistor, connect it into the bottom left hand leg, the rail associated with the bottom left hand corner leg of our momentary button, just 10K resistor. We can connect a second, or it's a 1K resistor and we can connect a second 1K resistor into the bottom leg of our second momentary button. Then we can add in our two indicator LEDs. Paying attention to the orientation, the cathode side or the flat side goes toward the ground rail, the anode toward the 1K resistor. Repeat the same procedure for the bottom cathode side to the ground rail, anode side to the 1K resistor. Now let's look back at our schematic. We've taken care of this part of the circuit. Now we just need to extend outwards. Um, also in this bottom left hand corner of our momentary button, we need to come out and then drop down with a piece of wire and connect a diode to the end of that wire with the cathode pointing away from the wire we add. We need to repeat the same procedure on the bottom left hand corner of our second momentary button and add our diode with the cathode pointing away from the wire that we're adding. Add our first piece of wire, putting it in the bottom left hand in the same rail that the bottom left hand leg of our momentary button is located. Just add in a piece of wire, send it down the breadboard. Repeat the same procedure with the bottom left hand leg of the second momentary button, sending the wire down the board. That's what it looks like. With that completed, we just need to add in our diodes. Paying attention to the orientation of the diode, the cathode and on this particular type of diode is indicated by a, a, a gray band. And we want to orientate the cathode away from the orange wire that we just added. 
the cathode needs to be in this direction. It's in the same rail as the orange wire, with the cathode facing that way, away from the wire. Second diode, paying attention to the cathode band, which needs to be oriented away from the wire we added. To return to our schematic, we're at the tail end of the circuit now. We have our two diodes in, oriented properly. Now we need to connect the cathodes of both of these diodes through a piece of wire. And then we'll need a 1K resistor coming off of this the lower diode rail, 1K to an LED to ground. Then we'll also need it hooked into the same rail, 10K resistor to ground. Connect the cathodes of both of our diodes together. A piece of wire. Then we have our 10K resistor that we can send to ground like that. All of this is in the same row on the breadboard. There's our 10K pull down. We can add a little piece of wire just to give us a little more room to maneuver. And then we add in 1K and an LED. In my case, I'm using a super bright green LED, so I need a little higher value than a 1K, but a 1K should be fine for most any other sort of LED. I'm using like a 4.7K right here that I didn't have any other green beside the super bright. So, <laughs> um, but you can use a 1K, you can actually use a little lower value if your LED is too dim. But we'll add in our LED, putting the cathode in ground. And in this case, it's pretty easy. The short leg is the cathode, longer leg is the anode. So we need to orient it with the short leg toward the ground rail. Longer legs toward our resistor. And that should complete our circuit. We should be able to add power to it and it should still match the behavior associated with an OR gate. Let's see. If we build it correctly, we should still be able to say the first state is when both inputs are false, the OR output should be false. Or when they're both low, the output should be low. That's this state. Looks good. The next scenario could be input 1 could be high input to low and we would expect our output LED to be high and it is. Input 1 is high, input 2 is low, the output is still high. The next possibility would be input 1 low, input 2 high which, would, which should make our output LED come on, which it does. And then the final state is both of our inputs could be high, and then our output should be high. And it is. So we know that we've successfully created an OR gate using two diodes. With a final shot at the schematic, I hope this video has been helpful. And if you liked it, please consider clicking like, and also consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you.